Welcome to Quarter Hour Catechism with Father Sam. A parishioner of mine had a brilliant idea. As we face the corona crisis scare of 2020 and so much of the church has had to go inside and over live stream, the idea was why not use this time at home with homeschooling, family activities, streamed masses, and the rest to also deepen our faith through a study of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. So the parishioner said, Father, why don't you make short little snippets of the Catechism, put it out to your parishioners over the internet, and let them enjoy it. So here we are. And so in 15-minute little segments, or less maybe even, we will have this quarter-hour Catechism, where little by little we'll take a study of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Not in depth, not every paragraph, not all the way through. It is a big, thick book about this thick after all. But we'll go through and consider the highlights, the main points, and deepen our faith to come alive more in it in this way in these days. But I think we do things well when we begin in prayer, so let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Almighty and Eternal Father, we come before you, who are the author of all good things. We thank you for the life divine which you share with us through Christ. We thank you for the revelation of your truth, goodness, and beauty in all of its fullness in your Son, and we thank you that as he has sent the Holy Spirit upon us and the Church, we are drawn into union with Christ, united and conformed with him all the more. You are made, we are made by you, your sons and daughters, so Lord, lead us and guide us, especially now in our consideration of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Let us know our faith and love it, so that knowing it and loving it, we would know and love you and come alive in this relationship all the more. We entrust this good endeavor and our time together all to the prayers of the Blessed Virgin Mary, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to begin with a scripture verse. Let's take ourselves back to the time of the Acts of the Apostles. Let us recall that after Jesus who was crucified, died, after he descended into hell and arose again from the dead at his resurrection, when he ascended into heaven and sent the Holy Spirit, he gave to the early church the power of the Holy Spirit to do all the things he charged the church to do until the end of time, to draw all the nations to himself, to draw individual human persons into the plan of salvation and a life of grace. So what did it look like in the early days of the church? What did the early church do? Well, here is our consideration. So those who received his word were baptized, and they and there were added to that day about 3,000 souls. And they held steadfastly to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of the bread, and to prayers. Look what's in that example from the Acts of the Apostles in chapter 2. They're gathered together. They received the apostles' teachings. There is a fellowship, there's a sharing of faith, a living of the life of faith in common with each other. The breaking of the bread, an allusion, a direct reference to the Holy Eucharist itself, to the sacraments, and to the life of prayer. This becomes our starting point for a consideration of the Catechism, a reflection for these coming episodes. But let's begin where we're meant to begin, right in the beginning, the very first paragraph of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Indulge me, here it is. God infinitely perfect and blessed in himself, in a plan of sheer goodness, freely created man, to make him share in his own blessed state. For this reason, at every time and in every place, God draws close to man. He calls man to seek him, to know him, to love him, with all his strength. He calls together all men, scattered and divided by sin, into the unity of his family, the church. To accomplish this, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son as Redeemer and Savior. In his Son and through him he invites men to become, in the Holy Spirit, his adopted children, and thus heirs of his blessed life. This is the whole program of Christianity. This is our dignity. This our potential. So let's consider it all the more fully. Now let's break it down. So let's begin right at the beginning of it. We are called to know and to love God, but that means that God has to show us who he is. There has to be a revelation, a self-manifestation, a showing up. This is who I am, and I want you to know me. 
Yes, God dwells in light, invisible, in a darkness beyond our comprehension. But our good God who made us and wants to have friendship with us has to show us who he is. So there is a revelation of God. So God has shown himself to be perfect, blessed. He is the fullness of all that is true, good, and beautiful. We can describe God as all good, all powerful, all loving. This is the God that we live, we believe in, and this is the God who has revealed himself, who created the world, and he made us to share his life. So he wants us to know him. He draws us to himself. We don't have a faraway, distant God who just makes us and said, just take care of yourself. No, I created you, and even if you fell away from me, I come to save you, and I want your friendship, your intimate love, and so I have a plan to draw you back to myself. I will seek you. So what is our call, the call of the human person? It means that for our part, we also have to seek God, know God, and love God. What are the ways in your life that you've already done this? Or have you felt that spark of faith? Where has it been impressed upon you? Maybe in your childhood, maybe in your adolescence, teenage years. Maybe it's come to you as an adult. How have you been inspired to seek God? How have you been inspired to know him all the more. And out of that seeking and that knowing, how have you been inspired to love him? And maybe the question for us today as you view this video, wherever the Lord finds you in your own life right now, wherever you are on your faith journey, we're all somewhere. What does that look like now? What is God the Holy Spirit doing now? How is he leading you now to seek him, to know him, and to love him? And so we see God at work in our lives. He created us and he wants to draw us into his most intimate unities and for eternity. And though we had sent, distanced ourselves from God, listen again to those words. We were scattered and divided by sin. There was a disruption to the plan of God, and it's our fault. But God would not let us just remain in that place. Instead, no, he wants to draw us back. We're going to consider all of these fine points in the coming episodes. Our creation, our fall, our redemption what Christ did for us, and now how we can come alive all the more intimately, all the more powerfully in him. And so scattered and divided by sin as we were, God wants to draw us into a unity and to make us one through his church. And so God has a plan to do that. It involves his son, the God that you and I believe in, who is all good, all beautiful, all true, all knowing, all loving. He is a trinity. The one God is three divine persons, Father, Son, and Spirit, three co-eternal distinct persons who share the one divine substance. We'll explain that all later. But this one true God, the Holy Trinity, he wants us to know him, to love him, to serve him. And so the Father sends the Son by the power of the Holy Spirit. When the fullness of time had come, that's the language of St. Paul. I've always loved those words. There was something fitting and right. We all have in our mind's eye that image of the nativity. The cold night, the shepherds, the angels, the ox and the uh, ass and the lamb and all such things, and the little babe in the virgin's arms. That was a beautiful night. That the fulfillment of it all. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son as redeemer, as savior. So when Jesus comes to us, the second person of the Trinity, God the Son, who becomes the Son of Man through Mary, it means he's on a mission. There means That means there's something in us that has to be redeemed. It means that there's something in us that has to be saved. Are we in touch with that? Maybe that's another prayer we put to ourselves. Lord, how do I need redeeming? What in me? In my thoughts? My words? My actions, my oh, dispositions, my beliefs, my patterns, the way I see the world, the way I handle money, relationship, every part of me. Is there something in me yet needing redeemed? Is there something at some level broken and estranged from God that I cannot fix and repair by myself? I can't save myself, and so instead I need a Savior. Jesus has come to be our Savior, what does it mean to need a Savior? 
And so maybe my prayer as we go through this catechism, our prayer is to plunge right into these depths. Lord, what does it mean to seek, know, and love you? What does it mean to have a Redeemer and a Savior? Ah, but it gets even better. We are made for divine life. The same Holy Spirit who came upon our Blessed Mother Mary at the Annunciation so that God could become man, the same Holy Spirit comes upon us now in these days after Pentecost to transform us to become God-like. And so the Holy Spirit makes us children of God the Father, one with Jesus Christ, so intimately united with Christ that we are co-heirs to the kingdom of heaven. So the question for all of us is, do we believe this? Is our hearts open to this? Do we want this plan of goodness to take hold and form in our lives? Are we eager for it? If you want the blessed life of heaven, I think you and I are going to be called to know our faith, to live out of our faith all the more. So let's look at how we're going to consider the catechism of the Catholic Church in the next parts here. This is the plan of the catechism. The first part is... We are going to talk about the faith, how God has revealed himself, the truth that he has shown, not that we've made up, not that we have come to believe on our own, that God has revealed, taught through the apostle, handed down through the church. That's the first pillar, the profession of faith. The second pillar is the sacraments, how we celebrate the faith, how we enter into it, how we receive mystically the life of Christ in our own soul. That is through the sacraments. The third is how we respond, how we live a life of virtue, how we become more Christ-like, and how we live the very life of Jesus Christ hidden within us. It's now not I who live, but Christ who lives within me, says St. Paul. So that's the life of faith. And all of this is fueled by the fourth pillar of the Catechism, by prayer. Oh, we are nothing without prayer. Man is a spiritual being, and we're made to relate to the Almighty. We have restless hearts. And they will not rest until they rest in God, said St. Augustine. And so we are a people who speak to God, for he has spoken to us. And as we learn this prayer, as we pray deeply in Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit, speaking to the Father in glory, we become a persons, persons of deep, intimate prayer. Prayer that begins in this world and that propels us right on up to the very life of heaven, till at length and at last, God willing, we'll stand face to face before our Lord and enjoy that perfect life of inherited glory made sons and daughters in the Son with the Father. So you and I have a great potential, a great destiny in front of us. These four things are going to help us get there. But what we're going to do in the next several episodes using this series is to plunge more deeply into our understanding of the faith. But it's not just about mm, mental knowledge. It's not about checking off a checklist of things that we can assent and affirm to intellectually. All of it must start in our mind, but then go into our hearts. All of this, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, is about our relationship with God, fueled in prayer, coming alive with Him. We know our faith so we can love the faith, so that we can know God and love God. And so you and I are made for these things. We're made for glory. We're made for heaven. And the Catechism of the Catholic Church is an excellent guidebook to help us get there, to understand the scriptures, the tradition that we received, how we live and celebrate our faith. It's a joy to be a Catholic. It's a joy to be Christian. And we're on the journey. A catechism means a study of the faith. And you and I are not just students. We are those who are disciples, coming alive all the more in the Lord. And we take the first steps today on that road to heaven, deepening our faith, opening our hearts, loving our God. And as we said, we do it in prayer. So I think we should close this first episode, our introduction, with a prayer for the journey. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of truth, lead us into all the truths of our faith. Let us know who you are, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us know the plan of salvation you have for us, and let us come alive by your grace. And let us be transformed even now by this study. For we make these and all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you.